Peggy 3. Hello and welcome back to FM22 Feature Insight. If you haven't yet watched part one, stop what you're doing and go and watch that. The link is in the description. There we talked through the new data hub as well as further improvements to the match engine. And today we'll be bringing you information on a brand new deadline day experience and the fresh staff meeting feature that will elevate the way you work with your backroom staff. So being around the office and checking to different people, I've got to kind of hear their thoughts on how the game is put together. I think the balance between that realism and authenticity of the game and it being immersive, I find that really, really interesting. And so for the person who's got the finest of the eyes, like how do you walk that tightrope of the two? Um, carefully, <laughs> because there are, there are times when I'll be sitting there when I'm playing the game and I, I play the game on two computers essentially. I've got one that I'm taking notes on and one that I'm playing the game on. And I will go down to the minutest of detail on how it should be in the real world. Mm. We kind of have to balance that. And, and part of my job as the, the director, rather than as a designer, is actually making those difficult decisions on where we have to be completely accurate and where we can have a little bit of a license to, uh, to tweak things so that it's more enjoyable for people. Um, and so that it doesn't break the reality because there are things that happen in the real world in football that people would not believe. Mm. They just wouldn't believe them. And, and any time you see something in game that you don't believe, it takes you out of that escape, out of that world, back into the real world. And we try to, we try to stop that as much as possible. We want that to be split seconds rather than seconds or minutes. So it being immersive is, is a little tap on the shoulder of it being real all the time. Yeah. And, you know, the immersion... The immersion is something that has taken us so long to understand how we do it. Those first few versions of the game, we weren't thinking in the same way that we do now. It's always at the top. The suspension of disbelief is always at the top. So in terms of things being immersive, there's, I don't think there's anything more immersive in the sort of modern day outside of the game itself than deadline day. And in this video, we wanted to talk about and talk to people who understand deadline day. So there was only one person we could talk to, Fabrizio Romano, Mr. Deadline Day himself. Take a look at this. Deadline day is something incredible because the feeling you have as a fan, as a journalist, as a director, as a player, as an agent, as everyone involved in this game, is that something is happening now, in this moment. When you have transfer rumors, like in June, in July, it could take like weeks, days, sometimes months before seeing the player join in the club. On deadline day, everything is special because it's going to happen in some minutes, in some hours. So the feeling is something that is impossible to explicate in other sports. It's something that only football happens with big, big names moving to top clubs and with shocking news sometimes happening because it's not always easy to complete deals on deadline day. Sometimes deals are collapsing, sometimes surprising moves are happening. So everything is really new to the fans and this is why deadline day is something special. I still remember one time a sport director told me, remember that sometimes in football is happening that in June a player is untouchable, in July is available for big money, in August is available for normal money and on deadline day is available on loan and they pay part of the salary. So <laughs> this is why deadline day is crazy. Sometimes the situation are going to change and the opportunities are real. This is why they are waiting till the last minute sometimes. It's not about the strategy, sometimes it's about the domino, but this is why deadline day is crazy and it's so appreciated. From what I know, the agents are now really active in proposing players, meeting with clubs. Of course, we have also clubs that prefer to decide by themselves and to decide their targets. But sometimes agents are offering top players also, and you have big opportunity of big names moving to top clubs thanks to agents offering the players. So I think it's something that now is part of the transfer market. For me, it's like Christmas Day when this football manager will be out because having the deadline day feature and football manager, so transfers are the best way and football manager in the same moment will be the best, the best moment of, of my year and will be amazing to, to try this new feature, to have transfer market 
with such a new uh, update for the game and trying to spend a lot of time also on deadline day to have the right strategies, the right opportunities to plan for my ideas. So I really love, love this feature and uh, I'm already planning for my signings. I have all my names on one note on my phone to have everything ready when the game will be out to start playing. So we've spoken to Mr. Transfer himself, Fabrizio Romano. Tom Bray, the senior UI UX designer for Football Manager, joins me right now to really dive into how FM22 has revamped Deadline Day. Before we get into that, tell me about your role at Football Manager. So uh, as you just said right there, um, senior UI UX designer um, is a kind of like a crossover. So we, we, the UX side of it is uh, obviously the user experience. So how people play the game, you know, making sure that we're covering off usability and make sure it works basically. Because as I say, if it, if it doesn't work, then obviously users are going to get frustrated with it. So there's that side of it. And the UI side of it is the user interface. So we've got to make sure that um, obviously the, the, the designs that we are creating for a football manager, a nice polished screens that users are really engaged with and they want to get more out of. So going into that deadline day coverage, and again, I think it, it seems like a theme that I'm, I'm realising, that I didn't realise as much as, as before chatting to you all, is that you want it to kind of feel like real life, feel being the important word. Yeah. And so tell people about it. I, I've been able to experience it myself and yeah. have a look at it. And, and it is, from my point of view, it does feel like it's something that you're not kind of working along your football manager, say. You get to this day and then you dive into it. Yeah. Is, that, is that what you're kind of get, getting across and, and what can people expect from deadline day? Yeah, so I mean, I mean there's a lot of things that we want to, to introduce basically is that um, before you get to deadline day, there's always talk you know, about rumours, who's doing what, who's going where. So we did a few kind of like some build up bits that lead up to it, so you know, like a week before and then obviously the day before and also the press conference questions that we, we build into it. We're trying to bring some like Kind of personal touches to it that allow the user to tell the press what they're looking for and then when you enter it we wanted you to feel kind of like you've got all your club colors there as your main interface but as soon as i go into deadline day boom i've got the kind of the familiarity of the gold and black you know and everything goes into that mode so there's that and there's all you know countdown timers you know processing bar telling you go oh, you've got seven hours left you know yeah. just to give you that familiarity and, and add that pressure to it you know yeah and you use the word boom there like, that is it isn't it there's, yeah. when we think of deadline day anything could happen you could bring in anyone in yeah. and there could be those last minute moves that's what i really like about it this year is that there, there's like an, an overview of the the chaos yeah. like, how did you go about creating something that people can kind of take in and understand, but still giving you that little element of, of chaos. Yeah, I mean, um, like, like I say, we're, we're doing what we roll, it's kind of reworking it. I mean, our job is to kind of give a user experience. So, so make sure that we're giving you the right content at the right moment. And then obviously giving you that kind of level of doubt maybe, but at the same time, you've got to, cause chaos in this you know you've got to go oh so you were signing a left back the other day what about this left back so the agent offer comes in and says oh my client's looking for a move thinks your club's the brilliant one and you're, you're going oh okay I've got, I've got to move for this player now so there, there's an element of that we're kind of just dangling carrots basically to say you know you haven't thought about this player why don't you mm. um, and it goes for the transfer news as well you know if if agents aren't offering you players you're gonna read about what's going on like we do in the media and see that, um, I don't know, let's say a player is linked to another club and you're going, I quite like that. I didn't realise they were up for sale or whatever. So it's just kind of making the user think that mm. there's more out them than they think there is. And that kind of surprise element is what we want, is that, you know, people thinking that deadline day has made um, a real change to kind of their, their saves because they've done something slightly different and out of the normal, basically. So we've covered the brand new Data Hub match engine improvements, deadline day, and so now's the time to introduce you to a new way of collaborating with your staff. In addition to the recruitment meeting introduced in FM21, you'll now have a weekly staff meeting with your team to cover a wide range of topics, including coaching, development, staffing, and squad planning. To talk more about how this feature takes inspiration from the way managers speak with their teams in the real world, we caught up with Chris Wilder. Communication is, is, is key, however that's, however that's done, whether you know, it's as simple, simplistic as a, a, a chat over coffee uh, with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a member of staff, uh, group meetings with that uh, particular uh, department or an overall team meeting with all departments brought in uh, into into the picture 
So, you know, it's huge that, uh, that the communication levels are right from, from manager downwards so the relevant information gets passed through. Obviously, the, the, the meetings that we, that we have when we're talking um, can be, you know, of, of all different kinds and, and, and natures. You know, one-to-one -one meetings, uh, meetings uh, with, with, uh, with departments, individual departments that, that make up a, a football club from the sports science department to the video analysis department to the coaching department to the academy de department or really bringing that all together in, into uh, into one major weekly meeting which uh, I should imagine now the majority of if not all the football clubs do um, and especially at the highest level. You know trust is a huge word in, fo in, 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 in football because um, you can't as I said you can't do it all on your own so Delegation, um, you know, uh, management of your your staff and and they uh, knowing what you're looking for. I think people talk about you know managers have have possibly you know 50, 50 different problems a day to deal with. You know, you're preparing training. You know, you're looking at you know if players are injured, if they're available to train, uh, are they available for the next match? So. Yet again, those those meetings, whether whether you're sitting in on them, your 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 one to ones, or you're just walking around and seeing people in the cafeteria or the restaurant, or just having a general catch up coffee with them, is is usually important. So, Miles, we just heard from Chris Wilder about how important it is that he hears from his backroom staff, and that's an element of the game this year with the the staff meetings. How important is it for for you, who, of course, having made a game for so long about football, I'm sure you've met a lot of people, to get their perspective and insights, a bit like is happening in the game itself with staff meetings? It's essential, and it has been for a long time. So, before we were even making the Football Manager series, when we were still making our, our old series, we knew that the game had become part of football because people started talking in the press about how they were scouting players and using our data to go and find players. Our, our research team, such an important part of what we do and having over a thousand scouts around the world watching players week in, week out, that's something that, that football have become involved in. And, but, you know, we don't work at football clubs day to day and whilst for over a decade we've had unrivalled access at certain clubs. That unrivalled access um, has really helped drive the game. But we've grown a lot as a studio in the last couple of years. Um, you know, there's not just 50 of us anymore. You've learned about some of the people and today in, in this video and some of the new roles that we have and the way that we're doing features now. Um, so it's really important that that knowledge and that access wasn't just in my head anymore and that we were able to unlock it a little bit. So we set up in the studio uh, what we call the foot talks, um, which are private because if they aren't private, we don't actually get proper information out of people um, because there's a very big difference about talking to someone privately and talking about someone publicly right on, on what will get discussed and the guests come along to the foot talks and and it's normally me that gets to interview them and i'm asking them questions based around future features that we're working on and um how how they do things in real life so how that will make things work in game so one of the reasons that you get the option on the staff meetings on how often to have them is because different head coaches and managers have given us different answers as have assistant managers, as have data analysts, as have technical scouts. Um, so we have a wide variety of people that we actually talk to from inside the game, including players as part of the foot talks, and really try to drill down things that are going to help steer the game. So Miles, it's been a joy to sit down and chat with you, meet you in person for the first time. But it would be a miss for me to not give you the opportunity to, to chat to the people around the world that, that love the game as we look forward to FM22 coming out. Um, I just want to thank everyone for their support over the years. Um, the fact that people keep buying the game means that we can continue to make the game and continue to make it better. Um, and I hope that in these difficult times that everyone is happy and healthy 
um, and really loves what we're doing with, with FM22 as, as they have with previous games. Um, you know, you keep supporting us and we'll, we'll keep delivering as, as best as we can. And that's it, all four headline areas detailed by the people who powered the features themselves with a little guidance from some experts within Football 2. There's even more detail to come from the Football Manager team. Keep an eye out for in-depth feature blogs that'll go even further under the hood on those key areas, as well as other exciting new additions that'll drop on the FM social channels over the next few weeks. Remember, FM22 is out November the 9th, and if you pre-purchase now on PC or Mac, you can secure 10% off and early access. Thanks for joining me here in the studio, and good luck with your FM22 saves.